Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for August 28th, 2015. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and uh, this week I'm going to talk about my, my top five list of pen testing tools that I saw uh, while out in Vegas this year. Um, I'm also going to talk about a few things that are interesting in the news lately, such as Google Chrome is going to start killing off uh, Flash in the browser, which is pretty awesome, um, as well as uh, we're going to talk about some malicious interns. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills InfoSec by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. And by Cybery.it. Get the latest hacking and security training for free from www.cybery.it. Um, and you can uh, use our special uh, referral link at the bottom here. It's hacknaked.tv forward slash cybrary. Okay, so let's jump right into uh, my top five pen testing tools from Black Hat, DEF CON, and Besides Las Vegas. I know it's been a few weeks since those conferences, but um, I really wanted to kind of throw together a list of some of the top things that I, I felt were pretty neat, specifically uh, in regards to pen testing. Um, so, so first off, PowerShell Empire. Holy hell, is that awesome. PowerShell Empire is, is in my mind, going to kind of change the game in terms of uh, doing internal pen testing and uh, Pivot and C2. Um, so PowerShell Empire, essentially, uh, I, I would compare it kind of to what Meterpreter is kind of doing in some of the modules in Metasploit. It's a, uh, it's a, a payload and... Uh, uh, payload and, and handler based kind of system. So you have your handler on your on your C2 server. Um, you connect outbound uh, from from your your victim client, and then you have access to a, a slew of, uh, of of modules um, that that are you know the range from key logging to popping up a message on the the user system telling them their computer is disconnected from the domain. Please enter your creds. Uh, you've got uh, pass the hash. Uh, you have um, other other methods to to like PS exec to other systems WMI. Um, you've got the whole Veil PowerView framework built in. It's beautiful power ups there. Um, so you know it's something that uh, I'm going to be using on pretty much every pen test going forward. And uh, and I think I think a lot of other people are going to try to jump on the bandwagon too because it's just awesome. It's written in PowerShell. Um, so so within the next few weeks I'll probably do a, a tech segment purely on PowerShell Empire. Uh, so look for that coming up. Uh, Server-side template injection was a new a new vulnerability that was discussed by the Port Swigger team at Black Hat, and uh, basically it's a, a new vulnerability that you're going to want to look for on, on your your web pen test um, that um, could lead to remote code execution. So it's it's a pretty critical flaw. Um, BLE key is uh, <clears throat> it's a new device that kind of. Um, makes RFID badge cloning a little little easier, in my opinion. Uh, so the tradi traditional sense of, of how you would clone a badge has been, you know, you got to get in kind of range of the badge and, clone, and you know, have a scanner that can read it. You know, you got to get close to somebody, which there's been a ton of demonstrations on how you can do that. Um, but in my mind, this, this particular technique is a little bit sneakier. So this device, you literally insert into the badge reader itself. It has these little vampire teeth that inject themselves into the actual cables of the actual badge reader itself and can read card numbers as they cross the wire. So, uh, you know, you, you sneak up at night, insert this into the, the actual badge reader itself, close it up, make it look like nothing ever happened. Uh, employees come into work the next day, start scanning badges. You connect to this device over Bluetooth, and uh, through through the BLE key software, you can start to uh, develop a list of, of card card numbers. And you could either a go clone your own cards and make make a new one based off of it, or you could just replay it through the device itself. So you walk up and literally hit replay, door unlocks. Um, so something to look at uh, for your next physical bin test. Um, NetRipper is another tool that I thought was pretty neat. It's a uh, network traffic interception tool that does not require administrative privileges. So that's what's kind of cool about this is that uh, in, this, in the normal sense of packet capturing on a network, you have to have administrative access um, to you know, gain access to, um, to actually to sniff packets. Um, with this tool, it actually hooks into Windows or uh, does does Windows hooking to, uh, to to gain access to things like like putty sessions, WinSCP. Um, so it's not like a full packet capture. It only can sniff a few applications, but um, it's it's pretty neat, you know. I mean, as as a low level user, it could could facilitate um, assisting and privilege escalation. Um, the last thing was Cracklord. So Cracklord is a distributed password cracking system. So if you have uh, multiple systems with multiple GPUs. Um, you might want to utilize all those resources to crack passwords. I mean, if you've if you've got one system cracking passwords over here, why not have it have the ability to utilize these other GPUs on a completely different system? So this uh, this this software allows you to do that. Um, I mean, you could imagine. I mean, you could you could grow a huge 
a huge server list with a ton of different GPUs and have a massive like octopus of of, uh, <laughs> of password crackers all cracking the same same uh, same hash. Um, so uh, what, what else is cool about this particular thing is it has a queue software. So like uh, if you have like uh, multiple users that would would typically be wanting to crack passwords, you can submit different hashes to the system and it will queue them up for cracking. Okay, so let's talk about the news a little bit. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting is, is Chrome announced that on September 1st, which I think is like uh, next Monday or so, they're going to start killing off uh, Flash ads in the browser, which is awesome. Um, they're still going to allow some essential Flash um, Flash modules to, to, to run automatically in the browser. So, um, you know, the full vulnerability is not completely mitigated there, but um, for all your, your, your typical users um, that are using Chrome anyway, are going to have um, a su substantial drop in malware activity just, just based off the ads alone. Um, if you didn't know it already, advertisements are one of the main mechanisms of uh, delivering exploit kits. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Chrome's already stepping in that right direction and uh, starting to just, just kill off Flash entirely. Just, eh, not, we don't even need it. Um, so let's talk about some bad interns. Malicious interns. So a, an intern for FireEye actually cr uh, get, was he pleaded guilty to creating and selling the Dendroid malware. So this particular malware um, was a remote access uh, toolkit for uh, uh, for Android devices, and he was selling it for I think it was like four hundred bucks or so on the, on uh, dark code. And uh, for each 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 purchase he made, you could infect like fifteen hundred devices or so. He faces ten years and two two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine, um, but. What's more interesting is that he was an intern at FireEye, and it kind of makes you wonder, um, you know, somebody who is is that skillful in, in coding and um, is able to create something that malicious, um, and they're working for a major security company, it makes you step back and think about, you know, how how exactly do you trust your security products and services? Um, so. To me, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the fact that they, they caught him is awesome, but if they didn't, um, you know, who knows what he could have actually injected into, you know, a major software like that. And I mean, Fire is not the only company that this probably happened to. I'm just, this is something in the news lately. Um, and I, I think that uh, every every corporation needs to think about who they're hiring and, and definitely keep a very close eye on, uh, on uh, new individuals, at least. And you know what? Long-term individuals too, because people get malicious. People, people get uh, uh, they they become insurgents to your own company occasionally. So um, keep an eye on everybody, <laughs> for that matter. Um, so let's talk about malvertising a little bit. So malvertising is the uh, the the form of delivering malware and exploit kits via advertising, and it's a very very popular thing. We just talked about Google Chrome killing off Flash in the browser. Um, so the Angular exploit kit. Uh, one of these uh, one of these malvertisers was able to get the Angular exploit kit delivered through ads on MSN, Yahoo, and a bunch of other major major websites. Um, they they basically ab abused uh, the app Nexus, which is an, another ad service, to uh, point to a German web server that was hosting um, the Angular exploit kit. Angular, if you don't know, is a payload that is very likely to deliver at one advertising fraud and ransomware. So. Uh, very, very bad, bad uh, exploit kit. And it's very, very common now. Um, so, I mean, the bottom line is, is block ads. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how many payloads, just, just from visiting a new site. If you go look through your web proxy logs today, you're going to see a ton of, of hits to new sites. And then immediately after they open that new site, you're going to see hits to Russian sites, Chinese sites, German sites. I mean, not to say that those are specifically bad in themselves, but it's more than likely that uh, it's something that you want to look into. Start killing off ads, you'll see that number drop a lot. So uh, the last thing is uh, the FBI came out with a warning um, saying that basically since about December of last year, there's been $1.2 billion in losses due to uh, business uh, business email compromises. So uh, the, the, the idea here is that an attacker attempts to compromise the inbox or um, a system for that matter of an executive um, gaining access to to those emails they can start reading through them and kind of understand the business flow and 
By understanding the business flow, they can then craft even more targeted emails, spoofing employees such as a CEO, CFO, um, maybe somebody in like an actual like uh, transfer department, and craft emails that that will actually um, look legit enough that people will actually start to transfer money to certain accounts. Um, so basically, FBI said $1.2 billion is lost because of, of people sending spoofed emails like this. I mean, email is, I mean, obviously the number one thing and how you're going to get compromised via phishing attacks. Um, but now you've also got, you've got people trying to just steal money, um, through, through fraudulent emails. Um, and you know, I mean, it, the bottom line is like use, you know, protect your email accounts for your executives, protect, uh, your email accounts and, and make sure that, um, any transactions that are made, you're, you're doing over the, maybe, maybe like actually call the person and say, Hey, yeah, I got this email that said that you want me to send you a million dollars. Um, can you like just verify that that was really you sending that? Um, yeah. So, uh, the other thing is like, they, they typically like to use, um, like uh, type of squatting type of domain. So like, uh, for example, example.com. They might like let's let's say that's the target their 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 company they're targeting. Um, they might take example.com and then change the L to a one, for example, um, and then use that email domain to email from what looks to be like a CEO to somebody within the organization, and uh, you know trick them into doing something that they typically wouldn't want to do. And usually those types of items don't get picked up by your your everyday filters because there's no they're usually not trying to like include a link or anything it's usually just hey wire this amount to this number um so definitely something to be watching out for if you deal with uh financial transactions that's it for this edition of hack naked tv if you want to see more check out hacknaked.tv check out the always hilarious always informative security weekly on uh, blip.tv uh, forward slash security weekly. The wiki for that show is at wiki.securityweekly.com. Uh, next week is the HTCIA conference. Um, so you don't have much time, but if you do still want to come out and check it out, you can use the uh, 15% off promo code here at the bottom. It's just all uppercase, hack naked, no spaces. And uh, if you want to email us, we're at the show at hacknaked.tv, and I'm on Twitter at daft hack. Have a great weekend. See you later.